Hey, Thomas from Field Tennis. Today we're going to talk about beating the ball. Not beating it like this, but beating the ball to the intercept point. So when your opponent hits the ball away from you, then you are moving towards the ball and the ball is going that way. So you're both going to meet at some point. That's where you're going to hit the ball. And today's concept that I want to share with you is that you have to beat the ball to the meeting point. That means you have to be earlier than the ball. Here's an example of what it means to beat the ball. So I'll first play the forehand, this forehand at normal speed. So here we go one more time that you have an idea. So I was there earlier than the ball. So now if we go a bit more in slow motion and we watch, so you can see that if you're watching my right foot, so this right foot, so as long as the foot is moving, I'm moving, right? So now at about this point, the foot has stopped, right? So that means I've beaten the ball to the, to the meeting point. I'm at the meeting point earlier than the ball. So I can even put a timer like this on the screen and see how much earlier I was there. So you can see that my right foot is not moving anymore. So I'm there and now I'm in a way waiting for the ball while executing the stroke. So I was earlier than the ball 0.38 seconds, so almost 0.4 seconds, I was earlier than the ball in the right position. So that's an example what it means to beat the ball. So in today's video, I will show you why players don't get there earlier. Some players, so they, don't, they don't have this concept yet. So why does that happen? Why are they not beating the ball to the meeting point? Then I will show you the negative consequences of doing that. So what can go wrong? What is going to make tennis even more difficult than it is if you're not beating the ball. And then in the third part, I will show you some simple ideas and drills on how you can become better at beating the ball to the meeting point. So today we're going to take a look at forehands and backhands and overheads because these are the most common strokes and situations where these problems happen. So why are players not getting to the meeting point with the ball earlier than the ball well because that's a very natural instinct so i set my ball machine to shoot me a ball there so you can try this with yourself if a partner throws you the ball so if the ball is kind of going away from you then you would move at around this speed right so you would move with the minimum speed to get to the ball that's how your brain is going to calculate automatically right so that's why it's, it's very natural, it's very instinctive to try and figure out what is the minimum speed of moving to intercept the ball. And so that's what happens when you play tennis. If you're not aware of that, your brain is going to calculate the minimum speed of movement to the side so that you reach the ball. So you are moving like this and you're getting to the ball just at about the same time as the ball. And so that is the problem. Why does that instinctually happen? Well, conservation of energy. It's very instinctive to do that. So when the ball is going like this, I want to conserve energy. So I want to move with the minimum speed, minimum effort required to get to the ball. So in reality, I should have moved like this, like I'm here and ready and hit the ball. So I have to go very fast, very explosive, set up and hit. But obviously that requires more energy and you know, faster reaction and going and understanding this concept. And though instinctually player might not get that, they are still in the conservation of energy and just trying to get to the ball. So again, the ball is coming, player wants to move. Oh, this is enough. I reached the ball and it's not going to be good. So what is the main disadvantage of not beating the ball to the meeting point, to the hitting point, but arriving at the same time well, the main problem is that you will be still moving while you're hitting. So let me try and demonstrate. So the ball is going away from you. So when I'm hitting the ball, I am still moving. And so a lot of movement is affecting the racket angle, the swing path angle and so on. So that's the general, the main problem.
you are moving while you're hitting and that will not be a good tennis stroke because there's just like too much interference in this stroke. So if I exaggerate a little bit and I say, okay, let me position here and I wait for the ball, for sure you can see that that's going to be much better if I can wait for the ball here. So either I'm just kind of in open stance with, since the ball is coming in my strike zone or I step a little bit away and I step into the ball. So if I am still positioned, I'm just making one little step forward. So I would not count that as a movement. It's not a lateral movement because I'm already in the right space, in the right position to hit the ball. So this is just the weight transfer. So I'm waiting for the ball. I position, then I wait for the ball and I time my weight transfer. And I'm still very calm, not moving a lot compared to being here and not having an idea of beating the ball to the meeting point and then I'm still moving when I'm hitting it and again that's just based on how you see before we analyze deeper you can see that that's not going to be a good shot. So the second type of problem is going to be more technical so I'll be demonstrating a forehand here but the same idea applies to the backhand. So when the player is arriving late to the contact point, so they're still moving, they're going to feel rushed. And so when they feel rushed, reaching the ball, they will feel tension and this tension is going to compromise their stroke. So they will feel rushed, they're arriving there at the last split second. And so typically that will gonna, is going to result in tension in the arm. And player is going to shorten their swing, they're going to tighten their wrist because they have this tension so they're kind of reaching the ball and this is going to end up in a very short jerky stroke that doesn't have any effortlessness so again it looks maybe something like this so again if i exaggerate my position here then you can see that i have enough time to make a nice loop i can let the swing go so i feel the some downward swing this these balls are a little bit high but still here on this i can feel a nice downward swing i can let nicely my wrist lag i can let it lag without any rush without any tension and then it's very easy to slap the ball a little bit give it some extra power from that and so on so there are a lot of technical benefits when you reach the ball in time because you are not mentally pressured you relax mentally and because you relax mentally, also relax physically, and the stroke works much better. So if I reach the ball in time and I have time to position, then I will be more calm and the stroke is going to be better. So whatever the stance, if I go neutral, this one is going to be a nice stroke. If I'm reaching the ball at the last time, then it's very likely that this is going to result in a tense, shortened stroke where technique is compromised and that's not going to be a good shot. So how can you work on improving your movement to the ball so that you reach the hitting point, the meeting point with the ball earlier than the ball? Well the first one is through awareness. So this is what you're learning right now. You're becoming more aware of this concept. And so what matters is the awareness of time. Because when you don't reach the ball earlier, so you're reaching the ball simultaneously, you're getting to the hitting point at the same time as the ball, there will be no time between you getting to the point and hitting the ball. So from here you will be reaching the position to hit the ball and as you have reached the position to hit the ball, you will have hit the ball. So there is no time in between. When you beat the ball to the meeting point, then you come here and now I have stopped and now the timer has started because suddenly there is time between me positioning and me contacting the ball. And so the longer this time is, the better you have moved to the ball, the better you have judged the ball, the better you have anticipated, the more time you have and the more effortlessly you're going to execute the stroke. So not only technically but also mentally because you will not feel rushed. So mental pressure, mental sensation of I feel rushed, of pressure or anxiety is going to always result in physical tension and that's going to compromise the stroke execution. And so if you reach 
the hitting point in time before the ball, then you will be more calm, you will not feel rushed. And as I mentioned before, you're going to have a better swing, better wrist leg and so on. So that's your main first guideline is do I have time between reaching the hitting point and hitting the ball or is there no time? So I'm just kind of getting there and hitting the ball. The second way you can work on improving this positioning to the ball and getting earlier to the hitting point is to exaggerate. So that's what I like to do with players. So right now I don't have a hitting partner, but the ball machine will do. So what I exaggerate is that I position already in the right place. So I position the player already in the right place. So they're somewhere on the side of the court. So when the ball comes, they will feel, okay, I'm positioned, I'm not moving. So this ball is not very difficult to hit. So I want to give them this sensation, even though you're not in the middle of the court, you're somewhere on the side of the court and the ball is coming to you, you can see that you have enough time to hit this ball, you're not rushed. So of course this is an exaggeration. And then the next step in exaggeration is that I ask the player to move before I hit the ball. So they will go from here, position, of course too early, so before they see the ball, they position and they feel, they feel this sensation of time. How does it feel to get to the hitting point before the ball and execute the stroke? And so that's the second progression and obviously the third one is to play realistically so I want to get here position and execute the shot and be aware okay I had a little bit of time between my setting up and hitting the ball and so that time will then allow me to swing better swing more effortlessly have a better wrist leg and so on so all the things that we've talked about so another situation that we must not forget and that the beating the ball concept still applies are short and deep balls. Today we're not going to go into deep balls much because it's going to make the video too long. And usually it's not a big problem if you don't beat the ball when going backwards because you're playing a defensive shot in a big target and it's not going to be a big deal if you're moving a little bit while hitting. But the concept still applies. So when you see a deep ball, you can try and go back quickly, set yourself up, stabilize, calm yourself down, beat the ball to the meeting point and then hit it and you're going to hit a much better defensive shot. But the more critical ones are short balls because these are the balls that give you an opportunity to create pressure, to dictate the point or even to finish the point. And so again, the same thing happens to players that are not aware of this concept when they're getting a short ball they will just move to the short ball with the minimum speed required to reach it. And so when they are reaching the ball, they are still moving. And by now you've learned there that brings a lot of problems in terms of consistency and precision of the stroke. And so when we get the short ball, we want to beat the ball to the meeting point. I want to be there earlier than the ball so that I can set up, calm down, get a nice swing, get a nice wrist leg forehand back and two-handed back and they all have the same uh, principles and then I'm going to hit a much better shot. So I'm going to demonstrate you now with a slinger ball machine a few times when I move in the wrong way and then a few times when I move in the right way. So here are a few examples when I move to the short ball in the wrong way. So when I see a short ball I'm just thinking okay I need to reach the ball so when I'm reaching this short ball I'm still moving. So. I'm still moving when I'm reaching the ball. So even if I don't want to come to the net, so the player might hit the ball like this and, and retreat. So it's just a short ball. And the player again is not stable, it's not balanced. And they're still moving when hitting the ball. So a much better way is to beat the ball. So I'm seeing, okay, I'm seeing a short ball. I position, you see that I had time to slow down, stop. So I want to stop, I see a short ball, I want to stop, slow down and then I can continue if I want to come to the net. So even if I'm not coming to the net, maybe I will get to this ball in an open stance. Maybe I'm going to go from here, short cross court and I'm going to retreat. 
So again, it's a short ball, so I want to be here before the ball. I don't want to get to the ball like this and moving while I'm hitting. So again, same principle. I want to beat the ball. I see a short ball. I move here, slow down, stop, execute the shot. So again, the same applies to one-handed and two-handed backhands. The next situation we need to also mention is the overhead smash and receiving the ball that's too short or too long. So again, players again become a bit mesmerized by the ball and they don't have this concept in mind of beating the ball. So when the ball is coming, they are usually still moving when they're hitting the smash. So that becomes very difficult, right? So for example, if I'm a bit too close, if I'm a bit too close and I'm receiving a deep ball, then the player will typically kind of move like this. They're not gonna beat the ball. They will just move back and hit the ball like that. So I want to beat the ball. So if I start it here and I see the ball is deep, you see I had enough time to quickly move backwards, position and hit the ball. So either I have enough time to transfer weight on the front leg, or at least I stabilize and I'm hitting off the back foot. So I'm, I'm hitting off the back foot, but I'm stable. I'm not falling back. So that's different than something like this, right? So again, very important for the smash. And if the ball is shorter than I think, so if I go a bit too far, so player will again kind of like move through the smash. The ball is too short, they're gonna move rather than beat the ball. So I want to come here, position and beat the ball. So quickly, where do I need to go? I want to slow down or stop if possible and hit the smash. So in conclusion, beating the ball to the meeting point is a very simple concept that you should uh, learn as a tennis beginner. But in case you haven't, you can still improve that even if you're an intermediate player. You're going to gain so many benefits from being there on time and you're going to also force your mind to judge the ball earlier. Otherwise, your mind can get a bit lazy because all you're asking your mind to calculate is to reach the ball. But now you need to change that so that you're going to reach the ball in time. So with time to spare. And when you do that, you're going to see that the consistency and accuracy of your strokes is going to be much better. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.